Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Is it a birthday party? No, it isn't. Is it a luncheon party? No, it isn't. Is it a dinner party? No, it isn't. It's a breakfast party. Yes, it's a party every time you have rich, thick yellow cream and fruit on a heaping bowl full of delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Try it. See how crisp, how nut-like in flavor Quaker puffed wheat or rice tastes. And how extra delicious, all covered with velvety, smooth, rich cream. Start tomorrow. Make it a party every morning with this taste-tempting treat. Delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Soon after Constable Joe Carson was waylaid and killed while on patrol, Sergeant Preston and the great dog King paid a visit to the cabin home of the young Mountie's parents a few miles from the village of Copper Gulch. The purpose of his visit was to give them their son's personal belongings. Here's his watch and his money. We found more than $100 on his body, and he had two months' pay coming to him. It's all here. Poor Joe. My boy. Well, it's hard to take it, Sergeant. Here, Mr. Carson. Then I guess he wasn't robbed by whoever killed him. Well, they didn't take his watch or his money, but they did take his service pistol, his handcuffs, and his dress uniform. You mean the uniform with the red coat, like the one you're wearing? Yes, Mrs. Carson. He was wearing furs at the time he was killed. His dress uniform was in his pack, which was taken. My Joe looks so handsome in that uniform. Pop and I were mighty proud of him, Sergeant Preston. You had reason to be proud of him. Have you any idea who, who killed him, Sergeant? Only a faint clue. His service pistol was pawned in Whitehorse a few days after King and I found his body. Do you know who pawned it? I got a description of the man from the pawnbroker. It tallies with the description of a cook named Ed Bixby. He's wanted for several offenses. We've had posters out for him a long time. Here's one of them with his picture. Let's see it. Hmm. He looks like a criminal. He's dangerous. It's my guess your son tried to arrest him and Bixby killed him. But the guns are only clue to that. Well, Sergeant Preston, Mom and I appreciate you coming all the way from Dawson to bring us Joe's things. We've always been glad to see you and King, but now, well, it means more than ever to Pop and me. We'll be lonely now that Joe's gone. Couldn't you stay overnight with us, Sergeant? Why... I had planned to go on to Copper Gulch and get there in time for supper. Well, you could leave early in the morning instead. Well, of course, if you have important business to take care of, we we don't want him. No, it's on a you. routine patrol. It's nothing pressing. Then you will stay. <laughs> See there, King's begging you to stay. How about it, King? <laughs> well, looks like King's made up his mind, so I guess we'll stay for the night. Oh, fine, fine. Shortly before darkness fell, three men made camp on Skeleton Creek, less than three miles from the cabin of the Carsons. Ed Bixby, the leader of the trio, checked over their dwindling supplies. We're low on everything. A couple of us should go into Copper Ghost tonight and stock up. I could use a haircut, too. So if Hank will stay here in camp, I'll go along with you, Bixby. How about it, Hank? I'll keep camp. You two go on into town. But if you take my advice, you won't go in together. Uh, you're right about that. Pete, you better go along alone. I'll come in later. 
Might arouse suspicion if we're seen together. Okay, I'll shove along first. You have to get your hair cut, buy the ammunition, and a couple of sacks of flour. I'll get the rest of the supplies. Good. I'll meet you on the trail a mile or so out of town. Be seeing you, Bigby. The trading post in Copper Gulch was operated by a woman known as Yukon Mary. She was alone in her store when Ed Bixby entered and gave her a list of supplies he wanted to buy. I guess that's uh, all I'll need, ma'am. Sit down by the stove and warm yourself while I get them together, mister. All right. Thanks. As Yukon Mary collected supplies, she kept looking at her customer, wondering where she had seen him before. She was almost through when she saw him studying the police poster tacked to the wall. Then she reached under the counter and brought forth a six-gun she kept hidden there for protection. As she did, the customer got up from his chair and turned to face her. I think I'll uh, go get my hair cut. I'll be back in half an hour to pick up the supplies. You're not going anywhere, mister. Get them up. Hey, what's the idea of pulling a gun on me? I thought I recognized you, Bixby. Now, don't make a move unless you want to get hurt. Why, you all... Hey, cut that out. You're nearly winged me. I'll do worse than that next time. That was just a warning. Next time, I'll shoot for keeps. Hey, Jerry, what's you shooting about? I just caught a varmint, boys, and there's a bounty of a $1,000 on him. Who is he? Take a look at that poster on the wall. What? Well, Ed Bixby. Yep, that's who he is. I thought I recognized him when he came in here. Attracted by the shot fired by Yukon Mary, more and more men crowded into the small trading post. And among them, Ed Bixby saw his friend, Pete Bell but no sign of recognition passed between them. We'll get word to the mounted police in Dawson that we captured this critter. Now, who will volunteer to go to Elk Station tonight and send them telegrams? Uh, just a minute, ma'am. What's that, mister? There's no need to go to Elk Station to send a wire. Why not? It's the nearest telegraph station. Today I ran into a Mountie. He's on patrol up this way. I think I can find him. That'd save a lot of time. And it'd save some Mountie a special trip all the way from Dawson. You folks just hang on to this critter. I'll go get the Mountie and have him here in no time. All right, you hurry. Pete Bell hurried out of town and went directly to the camp where he joined Hank Dover. Hank knew by Pete's manner that something had happened. Plenty happened, Hank. Bixby's in a lot of trouble. Bixby? Yeah. Confounded, how'd he get into trouble? He start a scrap or something? No, nothing like that, Hank. It wasn't his fault. Is that you, Con Mary? In the trading post? Yeah, we ought to do something about her. But first, we got to do something about Ed Bixby. He went into the store to buy supplies. Yeah, 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 I know all that. What happened to him? You, Con Mary, saw Ed studying the police poster on the wall. She put two and two together and figured out who he was. Then what? Before she said anything, she got hold of a gun. She didn't shoot it. She fired one shot for a warning. She showed that she could handle a six-gun, so Ed figured it'd be suicide to resist. You mean to say Ed is under arrest? That's right. Oh, hold on. It's all right, Hank. We can help him. Now, listen. Yukon Mary wanted someone to go to Elk Station and send a telegram for a Mountie. But I told her it wasn't necessary. I told her I thought I could find a Mountie I'd seen in these parts. I figured you could pose as the Mountie. I see. We've got the uniform and handcuffs we took from the constable we dry -gossed. The uniform will fit you. Get it on. <laughs> So I'm to go into town posing as a Mountie. That should be downright interesting. It was almost daybreak before Hank Dover, attired in the red coat and broad brim Stetson of a constable of the mounted police, arrived at the trading post in Copper Gulch. No one thought to question him. It's sure lucky you happened to be in the neighborhood, Constable. Yes, it was. I was just about to head for Dawson. Bixby's a tough customer. Some of the boys will go along if you need them. Sure. Now, that won't be necessary, ma'am. I've handled tougher criminals than Ed Bixby. You'd better handcuff him. He's tricky. I will. Put out your hands, Bixby. You don't have to handcuff me, Monty. I'll go along with you peaceably. I'm taking no chances. Stick out your hands. Uh, all right. There. Now, ma'am, there's a $1,000 reward for this man. Yes, I know. I'll see that you get it. Get going, Bixby. It's a long trip to Dawson. When the two men got out of sight of the village, Ed Bixby said, You can take these handcuffs off me now, Hank. Safe. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think the key's in a pocket of this uniform. All right, all right. Where is it? Stop the pockets. Are you sure you don't have the key? Well, why would I have it? I thought when you took the cuffs from the constable that you took the key, too. Well, the cuffs were fastened to his pack. I didn't see the key when I shot him. The key must be in the pack. You'll have to wear those cuffs till we get back to camp. Oh, a fine kettle of fish this is. 
Meanwhile, Mr. and Mrs. Carson were up early and prepared a hot breakfast for Sergeant Preston before he set out for Copper Gulch. Well, Mr. Carson, how's traffic this season? Sergeant, <clears throat> it'll be right good, I'd say, except that I've had some bad luck lately. Oh, what kind of bad luck? Mm, a big timber wolf has been stalking my trap line. Mm. He's cost me some of my best pelts. Pop's tried to catch him, but he's too smart. Yes, I've laid in wait for him, and I've tried to poison him. But he's wise to every move I make to get him. You need a good dog to run him down. Yep. But a trapper can't have a dog follow him along the trap line. Animals would pick up the dog's scent and stay away from the traps. Well, how about taking King today? Show him the trail of that wolf and he'll run him down for you. <coughs> oh, I believe King knows what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> sure he does. He, he knows everything Sergeant Preston says. Gee... Would you mind leaving him with me, Sergeant? How about it, King? Want to stay with Mr. Carson today and help him catch a wolf? There's your answer. <laughs> King, I'll show you where to pick up his trail. And when Sergeant Preston gets back from Copper Gulch, we'll have that wolf's hide tacked to the cabin door. <laughs> when Ed Bixby and Hank Dover reached camp, they began a search of the pack taken from Constable Joe Carson when Bixby shot the Mountie. Pete Bell, their accomplice, also helped look for the key to the handcuffs. Yeah, that key's got to be here somewhere, Bixby. But it's not. We've been through that pack three times. The constable wouldn't have carried handcuffs without a key for him. I know that. But we overlooked something when we shot him. What? We didn't go through the clothes he wore. We didn't take his money or anything, you remember? That's right. We didn't. Yeah. He had the keys on him, not in the pack. Now I'm hooked in the cuffs with no way to get them off. Hey, what's that? A dog barking. Yeah, I see him yonder. The man with him, coming over the ridge. Hey, they've already seen us. What do we do? Act natural. You do the talking, Hank. You're wearing a uniform. But what'll I say? I'll say you've lost your key in the snow somewhere. Ask that man if he has a file so you can cut off the handcuffs. I hope he doesn't get suspicious. Well, with Hank wearing a money uniform, he won't. Maybe he'll wonder what I'm doing here. Well, Hank can say you're uh, going along to help guard me. Oh, sure. Sure, he'll believe that. Uh, here they come. I'll call him. Go ahead. Hi there, mister. Good morning, Constable. I wonder if you could help me. Well, I will if I can. I've lost the keys to these handcuffs. My prisoner's wrists are starting to swell, and I've got to get them off. With two of us to guard him, there's no sense in keeping him handcuffed. Oh. That's right. You see, Pop... I As Hank Dover hand. began his explanation to Pop Carson, he and his friends paid little attention to the great dog, King, who stood silently studying the man in the constable's uniform. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, the other day I was having a little argument with an old photographer friend of mine. He insisted that pictures could tell a story better than sounds. Well, I sir, say, I say, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words or sounds any day. But sounds tell you exactly what's happening. For instance, when you hear this, you know that's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The cereal shot from guns. You know that they're exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Oh, yes, yes, but but think how a picture would show how really big they are. Giant size, puff to perfection, crisp Yes, and... yes, but wait. What good is a picture or sound either when it comes to flavor? To the delicious nut-like flavor and melt-in-your-mouth tenderness of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Why, just take a picture of people eating it. You mean a picture of how folks beam with pleasure when they pour out a heaping bowl full of those crisp king-sized kernels and top them with rich milk or cream and sweet chilled fruit? Exactly. <laughs> of course, the best way to find out about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice is to taste them. Did you get that, fellas and girls? Just taste them. Every big, luscious spoonful makes your mouth water for another and another. They're not only super delicious, but super good for you. Quaker puffed wheat and rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. That's another big reason you'll want the big red and blue packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice on your breakfast table every morning. They're never sold in bags or bulk. 
and the smiling picture of the Quaker man on the front of the packages is your guarantee of the original, crisp, fresh, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Delicious. Now to continue. When Sergeant Preston reached Copper Gulch, he dropped in at Yukon Mary's trading post. Morning, Mary. Sergeant Preston, where'd you come from? You look surprised to see me. Well, I thought you'd be in Dawson. Oh, I had business up this way. Thought I'd make a routine call in Copper Gulch. Kings with friends a few miles back on the trail. I sure wish you'd been here last night. Oh, what happened last night? Oh, we had plenty of excitement. I nabbed a fellow you're looking for. Yukon Mary told how she had captured Ed Bixby and turned him over to a constable. As she talked, she saw Sergeant Preston's jaws tighten and his eyes darken. Say, didn't you meet the constable and Bixby on the trail coming here? Mary, you've made a serious mistake. You mean it wasn't Bixby I nabbed? It was Bixby, all right, but you didn't turn him over to a constable. Oh, sure I did. He was wearing a uniform. I know the whereabouts of every officer in the force, and no constable's anywhere near here. Oh, you must be wrong. How would he have a uniform and handcuffs if he wasn't a mounted? From the descriptions you gave me, I'd say all three men are wanted. Oh. The other two are friends of Bixby. Now I begin to understand. The uniform was stolen from Constable Joe Carson when he was killed. What a fool I've been. I never even thought to question them. That was a natural mistake. I'll call in the men of the village and tell them what I did. We'll form a posse and go after those three crooks. No, don't do that, Mary. Why not? We can pick up their trail in the snow. Mary, the mounted police don't operate with posses. Sergeant, there are three of them. They might be too much for one man. You'll get what Carson did. I don't think so. You say the man wearing the uniform put handcuffs on Bixby? Yep. And Bixby may be in worse trouble than he expected. How do you mean? See these? Keys? Yes. These keys belong to Constable Carson. They were in his pocket when King and I found his body. Being police property, I've kept them. Then those crooks don't have the keys to open the cuffs. That's right. The odds against me are reduced. I think I can handle two men without too much difficulty. Oh, of course you can. I'll shove on, Mary. It'll be a pleasure to capture the men who killed Joe Carson. Let me know how things turn out, Sergeant. I shall, Mary. Goodbye. Good luck to you. I hope he's right. But I have a hunch he's heading for plenty of trouble. Miles away, Hank Dover finished his explanation of how he had lost the handcuff keys in the snow. And then he said, With two of us to guard the prisoner, we don't have to keep him handcuffed. So I wondered if you'd have a file. I can cut the cuffs off his wrist. Well, I've got a file. i got several of them, in fact, but not with me. Oh, do you live near here? Yes, about a couple of miles back over the ridge. Me and the dog are out after a wolf that's been robbing my traps. I'll uh, get back with you, though. Oh, that won't be necessary, mister. Just tell us where to find the files in your cabin. Sure, no need for you to go along. Well, I reckon that'll be all right. Just tell my wife I sent you. She'll get the files for you. Pete, let's get the prisoner moving. Come on, you. On your feet. I'm coming. You don't have to shove me. Eh, what have you got him for, Constable? He's a claim jumper. Picked him up last night in Copper Gulch. So long, old timer. I hope you and your dog get the wolf you're after. Thank you. Those critters can play hob with a trap line. Come on, you. Let's go. As Hank Dover, Ed Bixby, and Pete Bell started to move away, King fell in behind them. He knew something was wrong. The red coat and broad Stetson marked Hank Dover as a member of the Mounted Police. But King knew he had never seen him before, and he knew all the Mounties. Not being able to understand the situation, he decided to go along with the man in the uniform. Pop Carson called to him. King, come back here. He wants to follow us. <laughs> Get back, dog. Hey, he knows you're a Mountie. What? He knows that uniform your friends wear. How does he know my uniform? Hey, this is King, Sergeant Preston's dog. Didn't you recognize him? Uh, not at first I didn't, but uh, I do now. I didn't expect to see him with a trapper. Where's uh, Preston now? Well, he went into Copper Gulch, but he'll be back late today. Well, King, let's go after that wolf. Reluctantly, the dog obeyed Pop Carson, though he kept looking back at the three men until they disappeared over the ridge. He was disturbed. Even the air about him seemed to warn him of danger. He tried to understand the situation, the sense of impending danger. But it was instinct rather than reason that cleared the fog of his thoughts. The scent of the uniform was familiar, 
but it was not the scent of the man who was wearing it. Where had he caught that scent before? Suddenly, he remembered. He thought of his friend, Constable Joe Carson, remembered how he and Sergeant Preston had found the young Mountie's body. King froze in his tracks. Uh, King, what in thunder is the matter with you? Uh, you're trying to tell me something. Uh, forget it, King. The Mountie can handle that prisoner. You don't need to help him. Uh, wish I knew what's upset you, old fella. I sure do. Pop Carson squatted on his haunches beside King. He stroked the thick hair on the shaggy head and tried to quiet the great dog, but he soon realized it was useless. King was in no mood for wolf hunting, so Pop decided to turn back to the cabin. All right, King. We won't hunt that wolf today. We'll go back to the cabin. Come along, Fred. Huh? Don't you want to go with me? Pop Carson was mystified. When King hesitated to return with him to the cabin, the trapper decided on another course. All right, if you don't want to go to the cabin with me, what do you want? <laughs> All right, King. You do what you want. You understand, boy? Go if you want it. King bounded away, but not in the direction of the cabin. He raced toward Copper Gulch. Then a light dawned on the face of the old trapper. Uh, son of a gun. He's heading for Copper Gulch. That means he's going for Sergeant Preston. I reckon I'd better go back to the cabin and see if I can find out what's upset him. Something's wrong, but I don't know what. Meanwhile, the three outlaws, warned by Pop Carson's disclosure about Sergeant Preston, took stock of their situation as they neared the cabin. Well, there's the cabin. We'll get the files and head out before that money comes back. Yeah, we have plenty of time. Trapper said Preston wouldn't be back until late today. Hank, the minute Preston gets to Copper Gulch, he'll learn what happened last night. He won't be fooled like the others were. That's right. Preston might be on our trail right now, for all we know. Uh, maybe. But if that's the case, you better cut off those cuffs as quick as you can. You'll need two gun hands if we run into Preston. We'll cut off the cuffs at the cabin. Then we'll decide to do what next. When we get there, you do the talking, Hank. Right. A few minutes later, the three arrived at the Carson cabin. After a brief explanation, Mom Carson invited the three men in and provided the file they sought. As Hank Dover filed at the steel bands, Pop Carson came in. What the? Hold it, Fred. Just keep your seats. It's only me. Oh, what brought you back? Well, I changed my mind about wolf hunting today. There's something I want to check on. What's that? Never mind him. Get these cuffs off. See, Mom. Yes, Bob? Where's that paper Sergeant Preston showed us last night? You mean the poster? Yeah, yeah. Let me see it. Huh? It's here on the mantel. There you are. Well, let's see. What's the matter, mister? Constable, if you knew who your prisoner is, you would leave those cuffs on him. What do you mean? He's not a claim jumper. He's a murderer. Pop, you're right. He's a man who killed my son. He is. He's the one... I'll kill him with my own hands. Hey, no. let me alone, Trapper Pete. I've got her. No. Let go of her, let go of her. Just a minute there, old timer. You keep out of this. Constable, what? It's Preston. I thought those cuffs would give you trouble, Big Me? Dobie, you can leave them on him. All right, Preston. You win. We won't put up a fight. Stand up, both of you. Get your hands up while I disarm you. There. Now you'll answer some questions. What questions? Did you kill Pop Carson? No, I just slugged him. You can take a look for yourself. He's not badly hurt. For the moment, I'll take your word that he's alive. Now there's something else. What is it? Where's your friend Pete Bell? We don't know anyone by that name. Oh, yes, you don't. Furthermore, there were three of you. Who came... <coughs> good work, Pete. I was afraid he'd look in the kitchen. It's a good thing I gagged the old lady or he would have. Now that he's out, what'll we do with him? I'll decide that after Hank gets these cuffs off me. Uh, hurry with that filing, Hank. All right, Within a few minutes, the handcuffs were severed, and then Bixby was free again. He turned to Pete Bell, who had been rummaging through Sergeant Preston's pack, which had been lying in the corner of the room. All right, Pete. Now we'll decide what to do with Preston and the old couple. I have an idea, Ed. See these cardboard signs? Yeah, what They're about quarantine them? signs, smallpox. Now, if we put a bullet through the lobby, all we got to do is tack these smallpox signs on the front and back doors. Pete, you've got something there. Sure, with these signs on the doors, no one will come into this cabin. The bodies won't be found for weeks. By then, we'll be miles away from here. Pete, you're smart. Tack up the signs, and we'll shoot these three. I'll tack one on the front door first. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, oh, oh, oh. Come on, boys! Mary and a posse were right outside the door with King. 
Pete was knocked off balance by the great dog's charge. Then the man rushed into the room with guns drawn, but no shots were fired. Ed Bixby and his pals were taken completely by surprise. They had no time to bring their guns to bear. They were quickly overpowered. Sergeant Preston and Pop Carson were revived, and Mom was released from her bonds. It was then, under questioning by Sergeant Preston, that Yukon Mary told her story. Sergeant, you told me not to organize a posse, but I went ahead and did anyway. We were about to take out after you when King came to the trading post. He was plenty upset about something when he got there. I decided we'd better follow him. It's a good thing you did, Mary. Well, King knew all the time that it was her boy's uniform that Hank Doe was wearing. King and our son were mighty good friends. You couldn't fool King. That's right. And now Ed Bixby and his friends will pay for murdering your son. <laughs> good boy, King. Oh, you're the best pal and partner a man ever had, fella. Well, let's go home now, boy. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, picture yourself up there in the Yukon, dog sledding or riding hour after hour like Sergeant Preston. You'd soon find out that real stamina calls for a nourishing He-Man breakfast. So check up on your breakfast tomorrow morning. Be sure it includes a delicious, heaping bowl full of nutritious, crisp, Quaker-puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, in these famous cereals shot from guns, you get extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the big red and blue Quaker packages. Never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, in these famous cereals shot from guns, you get extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the big red and blue Quaker packages. Never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Wainwright Cash. When we learned at headquarters that Mike Hanley had followed Dex Wainwright to North Creek to avenge the death of his brother, King and I started after them. But on the way, we learned of another plot to murder Tex. A band of outlaws were planning to kill him for his gold. And although Mike turned from enemy into ally, the odds were still six to one against us. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat... And Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.